Have you ever wondered how you paint textures, scan them, and then put them into your comics so your comics look like they're hand painted? Well, today we're going to make these textures. First off, we'll need some art supplies. Don't waste your time with any expensive canvases. Unless you're Bill Gates, then in that case, definitely buy the most expensive canvases. Now, almost any kind of paper will do. You could even use photocopy paper if you want. I've pulled all these out of my drawer. There's marker paper, which is great for markers, but you can paint on it. There's palette paper, which is kind of like tracing paper. You might not want to use that because it'll wrinkle a lot, but you can still try it and see what happens. There's watercolor paper, which obviously is going to be really nice and thick and toothy and, and make a good texture. Then there's regular sketch paper, too. Almost anything you, you have will do. You can paint on wood. You can paint on the carpet if you want. Then you'll need to get some paint. I really like acrylic paints and I like gouache paints because they both dry really fast and then you can just scan them right away. They're both water-based, so it's not oily and messy and stinky. Um, gouache paints kind of blend together even after they have dried and acrylic paints don't. Once they dry, they're dry. These are palette knives and they give you a good texture. I brought a regular house paintbrush I painted my house with it and now I'm going to use it for this. We'll see if that does anything cool. And I just have a bunch of old cheap brushes. So we're going to try some things. And this is just the sketch paper. So, I mean, already you kind of have a cool texture right there. Yeah. And one of the things I try to be aware of is not going to the edge of your paper. Oh, that's cool. Because you want to like have kind of an organic edge around everything. The reason you want to keep an organic edge on your textures is because when you scan it into the computer, bring it into Photoshop, and you duplicate it, you can put it on darken mode and butt that same texture up against itself and it will look a lot bigger than it actually is. So one texture can go a long way. So as long as you have a lot of white around it, I think you're pretty good. So now go buck wild with any kind of paints, paper, or brushes you want to use. Now, let's talk about scanning. Pretty much any scanner will do. I prefer the Epson Perfection series, but the big ones seem to get really expensive, like in the thousands of dollars. So, if you don't have that kind of a budget, you can get something like the Brother All-in-One, which uh, it costs two to three hundred dollars, I think, and it has a really big surface, and you can scan a lot of stuff. But if you're fine with smaller scanners, get an Epson. Once you bring your files into Photoshop, the first thing you want to do is adjust the levels to get rid of a lot of the paper. You can adjust your levels in Photoshop under Image, Adjustments, and Levels. I'll give you a quick demonstration of how I prepare my files. So what I do is I open up my raw scan and I select all around the texture. Try to get rid of anything else that might be interfering with my texture. This one has a lot of textures on it, so it's taking a little more work than normal. I delete everything else so it's all white. And then I open up my levels. And in my levels, you can darken it and lighten it and all kinds of things. But I like to just pull in the lights um, so, that it, so that it makes my paper whites almost disappear. I don't get rid of everything because I want to leave some of the texture of the paper in the texture itself. And then I zoom in. And you can just take your regular paintbrush and paint out these textures, but it's a little bit harder to do that. So instead of doing that, I suggest using the color, what is it? The Dodge, color dodge tool. And you can just paint all the white areas, put the exposure up to as high as it will go, and you just paint out all these white areas. And what it does is it doesn't actually paint everything. Like if, if things are dark, it won't really um, get rid of it all the way. It'll just paint out all the, the lighter colors. I don't know the, you know, 
honestly, I don't know what in the world it's doing, but it seems to work really well for this situation. And it eats into some of your textures a little bit, as you can see. I'm just going through and finding all the places where there was too much paper and um, getting rid of all that so that you don't see any paper lines, you don't see any paper textures. You're only looking at the, the paint texture. Again, some of the paint gets a little bit blown out a little bit, but that doesn't seem to bother me because I'll be duplicating this up a bunch and using it in a lot of different ways in my in my art so you know no one will know any difference when it's done and there you go it's all finished so now we just want to crop it and then save that and blammo you have yourself a nice texture ready to go you can pull that into your comic files and in the next video I will show you how to apply this texture to your comic and if you want you can look down below here is a link for my own personal textures I've made. I'm selling them on Gumroad for really cheap. And then there's also some videos over here where I have some more tutorials. So see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.